Welcome to this episode of the Mobile Classroom, the weekly video podcast where we demonstrate today's most popular technologies. I'm James Messer, and this week we're going to look at the Google Toolbar. In this episode 40, I thought it would be nice to take the ideas that we came up with a couple of weeks ago in our podcast where we were optimizing and performing a lot of tips and tricks on Google searches and took it to the next level by using the Google Toolbar. Even though the Google Toolbar is named with the name Google in it. It's not just for Google searches, and it takes this idea of searching and finding information really to the next level. We're going to show you how you can find information very, very quickly in that toolbar and really give you a way to customize the information that you're seeing. There are also a lot of customization features on the toolbar itself. You can add buttons. You can remove buttons. There's a number of capabilities that come already built in by default on the toolbar. We'll look at those, and we'll also look at ways to extend that so that you can really find a lot of different things, news, resources, maps, and other information, all with one click from that Google toolbar. We'll also look to see how we can consolidate our bookmarks and store them out in the cloud where Google is. That means we can go to anybody's workstation on any computer, on any browser, and still see the bookmarks that we've put in, regardless of where we happen to do those. So you don't always have to have your bookmarks at home. They can follow you wherever you go. And if you're someone who bookmarks a lot of different locations, this can be really, really useful for you. And lastly, we'll talk about sharing some of this information with others. The Google Toolbar is starting to blend together the idea of finding information and then posting it to Facebook or Twitter or sending an email to somebody. And there's even some customization that you can do on a per page basis. So wherever you might visit on that page, you can see what other people have said about that web page just with a click of the mouse using the Google Toolbar. One thing that you should keep in mind with the Google Toolbar is that it only works in Internet Explorer and Firefox. Ironically enough, Google's own browser, Chrome, does not support the Google Toolbar. But then again, Chrome also integrates in a number of the capabilities in the Google Toolbar as part of their browser and operating system functionality anyway. So perhaps you don't need it as much if you're using Google Chrome. So we're going to focus on showing you how it looks in Windows Internet Explorer. There's some minor differences to how it looks in something like Firefox, but it is pretty much the same technology and the same program in both. Uh, to find the Google Toolbar, let's just type uh, Google Toolbar into Google here, and it will take us to this toolbar.google.com as the number one link there. And you can see very plain page that says share and contribute web pages with toolbar. It's free and installs in seconds. There's a lot of different functions. You can side wiki, you can share, and a lot of uh, other things. So we're going to, yes, install it by clicking that. There's a terms of service that you might want to read through. The toolbar does uh, send some information back to Google if you choose to do that. When you go to a page, it gives you a lot of information and statistics about that page. The only way it can do that if it knows what page you're on. You may not feel comfortable doing that, so you have the choice to turn that on and off, and it explains a lot of that in these terms of service. There's also a privacy policy in here as well. I'm going to set Google as the default search in Internet Explorer. If it changes, I'm going to have it notify me. And we'll also set my home page to Google as well. I think it may be already, but that's OK. We'll make sure that's the case. And it even mentions that usage statistics are not associated with personal information. You can still disable that. SideWiki must use enhanced features in the dialog. So if you're going to make use of the side wiki, you are going to need to log into Google and share some of that information just to have that capability there. I'll click the Accept and Download. I would like to, let's go ahead and run this instead of just saving it. It's going to go through its process, download the entire file, and then begin the dialog in Internet, uh, Internet Explorer that says, this is my, maybe a security risk. We've downloaded an executable file. Are you aware of this? Are you comfortable with this? Yes, we are. We do want to run the Google Internet Explorer. On my screen, I'm going to get the user account control that asks if I'd really like to do that. And if you're running Vista or Windows 7, you'll want to approve that as well. And then it begins the installation process. And the install goes pretty quick. It's a relatively small footprint in the way that it operates. And the Google Toolbar now is installed. And you can see it's got it right up here at the top. It's already loaded it into my Internet Explorer. I didn't have to restart or do anything different with that. 
In fact, there are some new capabilities in here. It's automatically telling us about SideWiki. We're going to look at that in just a moment. And we'll dive into looking at that on other websites as well. There can be some interesting information in there. But this is the Google toolbar right here across the top. And you can see it's got everything there from its own Google search screen right here. We can query, plus a lot of other buttons here as well. Why don't we start stepping through the Google toolbar and have a look at what some of these things might do for us. One of the obvious things that the Google toolbar can do for you is to allow you to search Google. And you can see right here at the top, there is a link there for the Google search. And you can type in your search query, and it will search for that. Now, if you're someone who doesn't like to move around with their mouse very much, you'd like to go straight up there, you can hold down the Alt button and hit G, and the cursor automatically jumps up into that box. So if you're on a page and you'd like to search for something, you can very quickly move up there. Your fingers don't even have to leave the keyboard, and you can immediately start searching for what you'd like to, to see. Now let's say we wanted to find something related to news. We can type in news, and if I hit Enter, then I, of course, get the Google search for everything that's here. But let's say I wanted to automatically use Google's capability about feeling lucky. Let's say I didn't want to have to go to this update. Maybe I just had a feeling that what I was looking for was going to be on that first page. So let's try this again by doing my Alt G, typing in news. But this time, I'm going to hold the Alt key and hit Enter. And what will happen is instead of getting Google's normal search page of results, what it happens is it goes to the first thing that it finds. And I'm feeling lucky. It takes me right to that page that describes well, the first thing that was in for news. In this case, the CNN.com website was the thing that was number one in my news list. So that's what I went to automatically. So sometimes if you know you're, you're searching on the number one thing, or you just like to go immediately to whoever's in the number one position, it's a very, very quick way to do it. You'll notice the Google toolbar, though, has a lot more on it than just the search options. Certainly, you've got that Google search window with the Google search options and the things you can find relating to search. There's a nice pull down there. But there's a lot of other buttons here as well. There's one for Google News. If you want to go right to Google News, you can click that, and it will take you to the Google News page. You recall the podcast we did recently described how to get news on the web. So if you already have the Google toolbar there, you can click one button and get your consolidated and customized view of the news around the world. There's other buttons here. This one provides you with the link that says add new buttons for your toolbar because there's other things on here like Google Earth and the ability to share certain things on pages you get. But if you'd like to see what the different options are for what you'd like to see, you can add buttons to your Google toolbar. Let's open a full gallery here. The Google toolbar is pretty extensible. And you can see, I'm going to maximize this so we can really see it. Look at all of these different buttons that are available. So if you're someone who shops at Amazon a lot, if you use uh, need a currency converter, you can go with Facebook with full screen viewing in it. All of these buttons have been created. These are just the most popular ones. If you want to find some for communication, here's some here that will do translations and space photos, money and finance tip of the day. You've also got things like fun and games. Doesn't have to all be work. So you can happen to see baby wild animal pictures and NASCAR and other capabilities too. So you've got a, a, a really big mix of different things you can add to the toolbar so that these things can be immediately available to you with one click. Another nice built-in capability of the Google toolbar is the ability to do some spell checking for us, especially if it's a program or a computer that we're working on that doesn't have another way to do spell checking. So if you're in the middle of writing an email and you're sending a message to somebody, you can see I've got one with a subject and some more information in the post here. There's a button here for checking right here. And you can choose to check. You can also choose to auto fix. If it happens to think that it knows the word that it's going to fix, it will fix the word and it will turn it green to tell you it's been checked. I just want to check, though, and want to have it go through here. In fact, it says right here that there are certain words here that are not correct. And if we click them, it will give me suggestions. Maybe we would like it to auto fix some of these. I'm going to click the auto fix and notice they all turned green. So that's built into the Google toolbar. It's got uh, uh, the Google dictionary all online, and it's able to go through all of your mail messages and things that you do in a browser, and it's able to correct those for you. The spell check isn't the only thing that can be automated right in the toolbar. Even though you've got this Google search here, you can also use the Google search as something of a calculator. So maybe you'd like to 
ask what is 1440 divided by 12, and it just puts the answer there. You don't have to hit enter. You don't have to choose any other buttons. It gives you the, the answer right here. Let's multiply that by 12, and you can get a different set of numbers. So if it's something where you're trying to determine very quickly what's the answer for this, just type it into your Google toolbar, and it'll tell you without having to do anything else. The Google toolbar also allows us to create bookmarks as part of the Google capabilities here. I'm going to go back to CNN.com, and maybe I would like to bookmark the CNN.com website. You've got this option under Bookmarks to bookmark this page, and that's what I'd like to do. It's CNN, and uh, that looks good. It's already bookmarked there for us. The bookmark view also gives us a lot of bookmarks already built in. When I installed this, it added a number of bookmarks to get us started. But maybe I don't want some of these in my bookmarks list. I can delete those. Now I can also create a number of bookmarks to be public or private. I can create lists that other people can see. If I'd like to have other people collaborate to a master list of bookmarks, I can do that here. It's so one advantage of having this in the cloud is it's not just for you. You can expand the scope quite a bit so that you may have a science project going on, a reference that you'd like to have certain teams of people working together towards a common goal. And you'd like to have everybody store their bookmarks out on this very central public bookmarks area. And now you can work with them to create, collaborate, and decide what we'd like to do with the information we're finding. Another interesting consolidation feature from Google is something called SideWiki. This is relatively new in the Google toolbar. And it gives you a way to comment on pages that you might be visiting. And after commenting on those pages, anyone else who shows up to those pages who is also using the Google toolbar can see the things that you've left there. Let's give another example. The CNN happens to be the one we've gone with today. So let's go back to that one. The side wiki is right here. I can either click the side wiki option right here in the toolbar, or you'll notice there's a thin bar along the left side of this screen. And if I just click it to expand it out, it opens the Google side wiki. And what it does is reference now this page, what other people have left there on this page. You can see what other people have said about this particular website. And there's even more here than just this single page. There's quite a few people that have put this here. And it's even told us, nope, that's all you really need to look at. There's uh, other things that people have put in here. But the Google algorithm says those things aren't very useful at all. What we can do maybe go back to our main page here and see what other people have put in here at the top. And, and we can vote on it. Uh, Google SideWiki adds some things automatically, but the people who are using the Google toolbar who have added information with the SideWiki puts this here, and you can vote on it. And that way, if somebody's adding something to a page that either isn't correct or perhaps it's something that you should report, you can always click a button to report that abuse. Now, if somebody doesn't have the Google Sidebar, and yet somebody has said something really interesting in the Google SideWiki, one of the things you can do is share this out via a link, an email, a Twitter, or Facebook. So even though you have discovered it via the Google Toolbar, maybe if none of your friends are using the Google Toolbar, you can at least send that to them or show them information on your Facebook page. And anybody can visit that particular piece of information, even though they're not already running the Google Toolbar. There may also be times when you're surfing around the web and you found a page that might have some interesting information, things you'd like to know more about. Maybe it's a research project you're working on, but the best you can find is a page written in German and you want to know more about what's here. I don't know German very well, but I do know that my Google toolbar up here has a translate link inside of it. And all I have to do is click the translate button. And instantly, it seems, Google has already translated this page. Now, just like anything that's an automated translation service, some of these things don't exactly make sense when you're looking at it. It's more of a literal translation. But it's good enough in English, anyway, for me to figure this out. Since the year 2002 is the Middle Rhine Valley World Heritage Site, the valley with the looped riverbed between vineyards, castles, and palaces is the epitome of German romanticism. Many tourists head for, every year, the region. So you can see it, it comes close. In fact, it reads pretty well. And you can really understand what they're trying to say, even though it is a bit of a literal translation. One thing that I found with the Google Toolbar is there are so many options inside of it that you can really customize it to work the way that you would like to work. 
For instance, under this little wrench is the Google Toolbar options. And even just things like searching. When you do a search, it opens it in the current window. What if you'd like to have a lot of different searches going on at once? I tend to sometimes have 10 to 20 or 30 tabs open on the top of the screen. Maybe what I'd like to do is every time I do a search, open it up in a new tab. Or maybe I prefer a new window entirely. I don't like to have all those tabs on the top. You can customize this view. Uh, Google can, of course, suggest searches as you type. That's a capability that you would get normally when you go to the Google.com website. There's highlighted capabilities. You can add Gmail as your mail to links here, along with some of your general options, custom buttons that you can add right from here. And if, for instance, you're not a Google Earth user, you can get rid of Google Earth, but you're really, really interested in having your Google Calendar available. Let's select that and save it. And now you can see the Calendar button is there instead of your Google Earth. Another nice capability of the toolbar is something called autofill. If you go to a lot of web pages and you're filling out names and addresses and credit card numbers and other pieces of information, you might want to save some of those typing and have Google fill all of that in for you using a capability called autofill. You simply add a new profile into the mix and you can put information like your name and company name and address and contact information and even credit card information. Now, obviously, this information is very private type information, especially credit card details. You don't want to share those with the world. And so autofill does not send those to Google. This is a piece of information that is only stored on the computer where you have set this up with the Google toolbar. This information will never be sent to Google. It's not stored out there. It's not something where somebody else can have access to that from any other computer. You have to be on your machine. It's stored on a file on the hard drive of this computer. But it is a very, very quick way to start filling in forms very quickly, especially if you find yourself doing a lot of different forms on the internet that could save you a lot of time. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the Google Toolbar. And if you've not used the Google Toolbar, maybe you've seen some things in there that might make it very valuable for you to have inside of your browser. If you'd like to see all the things that we're doing here at the Mobile Classroom, you can visit our website at themobileclassroom.com, where you will find links to all of our podcasts, as well as ways to watch us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash mobile classroom. And of course, if you'd like to contact me directly, you can always send me an email at james at themobileclassroom.com. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you next time on The Mobile Classroom.